What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at Deno and then we're going to create an API in TypeScript using the Deno runtime version 1.0 that has been released in May 2020. Now let's see what Deno actually is. Deno is a runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript that has been written in Rust and it's using V8. V8 is the JavaScript engine that is currently part of Google Chrome and Node.js. Deno was created by Ryan Dahl the original developer of Node.js, and with Deno, he's trying to fix some of the flaws that he found in Node.js, such as the module system, legacy APIs that must be spotted, and some security issues. By the way, this is not a fork from Node.js. Deno is a completely new implementation. These are the main characteristics of the module system in Deno. In Node.js applications, we use NPM, where when we run npm install, for example, is going to download all the libraries within the node modules folder. So the approach in Deno is quite different. We don't need the node modules folder anymore. The modules or packages can be hosted anywhere. And those packages can be imported with Egma script six module import and from an explicit path or URL. And here is an example where we are importing the application class from that public URL. And one more thing here is that Deno stores the packages locally using a cache in the local file system. And we can get that location by running Deno info using the command line interface. Let's talk a little bit about TypeScript and Deno. For example, in Node.js, in order to compile TypeScript, we need to install and set up a compiler. In Deno, this is not required. TypeScript is built in within the platform. And the current version of Deno is using the TypeScript compiler from Microsoft. This compiler will be replaced at some point in the future. Deno is secure by default. A Deno module has no access to file or network or environment variables unless it's explicitly enabled. These are some of the flags that we can specify when running Deno. The allow net flag will allow network access. We're going to need this to create an API or a web application. Allow read and allow write will allow to read or write the file system. Allow run will allow to run subprocesses and allow end will allow to get and set environment variables. Let's see some other features of Deno. Deno ships only a single executable file. Deno is async by default, supporting top level await. We're gonna see an example in the project that we're going to create. Deno is based on modern features of the JavaScript language and has an extensive standard library and a growing list of third party modules. We are going to use a module in a second and Deno has a built-in testing framework. And this is Deno's official website. Here we have different ways to install the Deno runtime for different operating systems using different tools. I already installed Deno in my local environment, so we can run some commands. For example, Deno help. And here we have different subcommands that we can run bundle to bundle module and dependencies into a single file, cache to cache dependencies, doc to show documentation for a module, we can debug the scripts, we can format source files and some other subcommands. And we can also run info. And if we run, let me clear this. If we run Deno info, this will give us the location of the directory where it's caching all the external dependencies, this directory will be used by the TypeScript compiler. And we can also run here, there is an example here, and we can also run this TypeScript file directly. If we go here, we can see the source code where it's basically showing this message in the console. So let's run this here. And as we can see, it's going to print the message on the screen. And we can also execute some other example. This is a bit more complex. It's going to start a web server running on port 8000. So if we create, for example, test.ts and we paste that in here. And if we run deno run test.ts, this will run on port 8000. We're going to see that we don't have permissions to run this process. So we need to explicitly allow to access the network and we need to run deno run and we need to add the flag dash dash allow net. 
and then the name of the file that is test.ps. Now we should be able to access the application on this port. So if we open this URL, we're going to see that we have this message on the screen. That is the message that we are showing here as part of this application. And also as part of the Deno official website, we get access to documentation. So we get this Deno manual where we have documentation on multiple things, on multiple features of the Deno runtime. We also have access here to the Deno API. We can also access here documentation on the standard library, and we also have access to the source code. And this Deno standard modules or standard library includes libraries to manage daytime, to access the file system, HTTP, testing, UID, web sockets, and some others. And this is how we can use the standard library. We can import modules from here by using this format of URL, deno.land slash std at, and this will be a tag that will guarantee that the standard library will run on this version of the Deno runtime. And here we have access to third-party modules. Here we can find multiple modules to access SQL and NoSQL databases. There are also web frameworks that we can use. We have modules for serialization, emails, caching, template engines, and a lot more. And here we can see how to import these third-party packages. We need to use this format, deno.land slash x, and then the name of the module and the branch. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's get started working on the API. Okay, so the idea is to create an API. So we're going to find a main file where we're going to create our application and we're going to include the routes of our API. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it server.ps. We are going to use TypeScript here. And first I'm going to import the application object or the application class actually from an external library and that is OAC is a middleware framework for Denos HTTP server and we need to actually import this file mod.ts so we can grab the URL from here and we can import it like this import application from and we paste the URL right there Okay, now I'm going to create a constant to create our application, const app. And here we are going to create a new instance of the application, new application. And we are going to use this JavaScript class that we already imported. And we're going to define a port where our application is going to run. Let's say port 4000. And let's use console log to show that our application is running. Server running on port. And here we can pass the port. And finally, here we're going to use a top level await, await like this, and our application is going to listen on this port that we specified here. So this will be app that listen, and we pass the port like this. Port, and we pass the constant here. Okay. And we also need to add routes to create the endpoints of our application. So we need to import another class here that is the router class, router, this one. And we need to create a new instance, const router. This is equals to new router. And here we can specify the different routes or endpoints of our application. So this will be router.get. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to create an API for bands. So we're going to be able to get a list of bands. And 
we are going to be able to also create new bands. So the endpoint will be slash bands. And we're going to use the get HTTP verb to get the list of bands. I'm going to keep this as null for now. And we're also going to create another endpoint that is going to be a post endpoint to create new bands. I'm going to copy this from here. And now we're going to create an interface that is going to represent the band object. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it types.ts. And here I'm going to create a new interface. So this will be interface band. So we will have an ID. This will be a string. We're going to have a name for the band. This will be a string as well. We're going to have a genre for the band. This will be pop, rock, or whatever. And website. This will be a string as well. OK, let's go back to the server. And here, we're going to need to add handlers for these endpoints. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it controllers. And I'm going to create a new file to create the controller for bands. So I'm going to call it bands.ts. OK, so here I'm going to create an array of bands. And the type will be band array, like this. And I need to import this band interface. So this will be import band from. And here I need to specify the local path to this types.ts. So this will be dot dot slash types.ts. OK, and now I'm going to create two functions. The first one will be a function to get the list of bands. Actually, it's going to return this array. And here I can use an arrow function for this. And here I'm going to pass an object with a request and a response. In this case, I'm going to use the response. So this will be response and the type of this will be any so it's the response any like this and here i'm going to return as part of the body response dot body two values I like this sorry it's an object and i'm going to return two values let's say success true and as data, I'm going to return the array of bands. So this will be data. And here I assign the value of the array. This is bands, like this. And now I'm going to create another function to create new bands. Const add band. And I'm going to make this function asynchronous. So I'm going to use async. I'm going to create an arrow function for this that is going to receive a request and it's going to return a response. So this will be request response. And I need to add the type for this. There. The request will be any and the response will be any. I'm going to create a constant to store the payload or body of the request. And here I'm going to use a wait to get the body from the request. So this will be a wait request dot body. So here I'm going to use a special function, and this is request dot has body. That basically validates that the body is empty. So if it's empty, so this is response dot status equals to 400. 
and the body of the response will be like this response that body and i'm going to return two properties so the first property will be success and will be false and i'm going to return a message and this will be the request is empty Okay, if the request has actually data, I'm going to create a new band. So this will be const band. And the type of this will be a band. That is the interface that we created. And this will be equal to body dot value. And here we need to assign an identifier to this band. So I'm going to use an external library to generate random identifiers. So here I'm going to add import, and this will be B4, and the library is actually UID, is actually a library that is based on the node library, and I need to use this URL to import this UID library. Okay, and if we go here, we can see that we have these different versions of the library and here are exported at the end of the file. We are going to use B4. Okay, let's go back and here I can assign the identifier to the band. This will be band.id equals to b4.generate like this. Next, I'm going to push the new band to the array. So this will be bands.push. And I pass the band here. And I'm going to grab these from here. And I'm going to return 201 at the status code. Success will be true. And the data. Will be the band that I just created. And I think, yeah, I need to export these two functions here. So this will be export. And here I need to add the two functions get bands and add band, like this. And now I will be able to use these two functions from the server, but first I need to import the controllers. So this will be import, and I need to import the two functions, get bands and add band from, and here I need to specify the path to the controllers. So this will be controllers and this will be bands.ts and here I'm going to use the function get bands as the handler for the first endpoint and add band as the handler for the post endpoint okay now let's try this this is deno run dash dash hello net and the name of the file this will be server.ts to compile, download all the dependencies, or is going to read dependencies from the local cache. And yes, I forgot to associate the router to the application here. So this will be app.use. And here I assign the middleware of the router. That is router.routes. Okay, let's run this again. And now let's go to Postman. If we create a new band, I already added some values here. So let's say that we add this band with the name The Beatles, Shander Rock, and the website. So we send this request and we get an internal server error. I guess this is because, yes, here I need to initialize this uh, array. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to assign an empty array. So now I'm going to run this again. 
let's go back to Postman and let's try to create it now. So let's run this. And now we get a 201, as we expect, success through, and the data of the band that we just created. And now if we check the list of existing bands, we're going to get the band that we just created. Let's create another one. Let's say Ramones. This is punk. And let's say www.ramones.com. Let's run this. Again, we get success through and the data of the band that we just created. We get the random identifier. And if we go back here and we run this, we gonna get the Beatles, that was the first band that we created, and then the Ramones, that is the band that we just created. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.